Hello YouTube, this is Enchanted Life Pack TV and what we've got here is four clowns from four different parts of the world Washington, places like this all talking now about how today's down on a Russian jet affects the war on ISIS <laughs> which to me just thinks I'm gone so a Russian jet was shot down by a Turkish military and how does that affect ISIS? What the fuck have ISIS got to do with this, please? Stop mentioning them. They're all a load of shit, but made up by you. So, what we're going to do is just listen to what this, these clans have got to say, basically. They're all four of us at a very serious moment here. A Russian a jet was shot down by Turkish forces. It, let, it crashed in Syria, as far as we know. As we're speaking here, both pilots have been lost here. The Turks have taken responsibility for it. They've called for a NATO meeting. They didn't call Moscow first. And Russia has made it very clear through the voice of Vladimir Putin that it will be very serious consequences. This is a moment in time that we're going to remember for a while, I suspect. Go However, mistakenly, in, in self-defense, and it can, it can try and raise questions about what Russia is doing, perhaps weaken Russian uh, resolve or determination to persist in the effort and, and basically begin to, to get international pressure on Russia uh, to rein in what it is doing in Syria so that Turkey and its friends could get back on track with this idea of a NATO no-fly zone. Uh, over northern Syria. I don't think that is going to work. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to get the Turks uh, what they would like. Um, but it illustrates just how far away we are from a genuinely common agreed framework for dealing with both conflict resolution in Syria and weakening the Islamic State in a serious way. Uh, so in London, you know, if I could be a bit provocative here, it, uh, the, these events have to uh, ask us uh, what side is Turkey on in all of this here? I mean, its relationship, its in dealings with the Islamic State are quite legendary now, uh, and now we have this here. I mean, it, you know, it, it shows that Turkey wants to play a, a spoiling role in your mind, and I have to wonder if some people in Washington are quite pleased about all this. Go ahead. Well, it, Turkey has certainly had a very confusing uh, response to the Syrian crisis. Um, I don't think that uh, even some people involved in the security forces in Turkey have been very clear about its stance. And it appears that uh, Turkey's original view uh, approach about a year ago was to uh, remain as detached as possible from it in order to prevent uh, what it feared was... Um, terrorism on its soil um, from being engaged. And of course now it's had the terrorism um, and it's uh, adopted a very uh, strange approach, uh, partially in the sort of um, camp led by the US, um, uh, the coalition, but also um, maintaining within um, uh, some uh, constraints a, a very good relationship with um, the Russians uh, over economic and political yeah. interests. And so there is a, a huge amount of confusion, yeah. I think, in the minds of uh, everybody about where Turkey stands. The involvement or support of ISIS is um, an area that is very contested. Um, of course, there, is, there are those that will give evidence that, um, uh, that Turkey has been dealing with ISIS or at least tolerating it, uh, even allowing um, oil smuggling, yeah. according to some reports. But... Uh, at the same time, Turkey and uh, the Turkish government and others claim that uh, it is not in any way uh, encouraging or supporting ISIS. So th that's a contested area, unfortunately. Okay, well, it can be contested in some minds and others. It's, it's, it's crystal clear that Turkey is being very duplicitous here. Uh, Joe, if I can go to you here in Moscow, and I want to you know, echo two different points we've already heard here, is that you know, when you look at the major forces fighting ISIS here, they're not going to bend very much. And I'm, I'm thinking of the Syrian Arab army, Iran, Hezbollah, Russia, um, uh, and, the, and, the, and the government in Damascus. They, they have everything to fight for, not to compromise with people like Turkey with their um, record list. Let's put it that way. Also, Joe, before you answer, is that it's really quite um, saddening uh, from where I sit here in Moscow is that the relationship between Turkey and Russia has actually been a flourishing one before all of this started. Very strong relationship, very strong ties uh, when it comes to uh, tourism particularly, and in business. It looks like all of that is being thrown away for a policy that is very incoherent and extremely dangerous to what country? Turkey itself. Go ahead, Joe.
Uh, I think the Turks in this instance uh, were upset that the Russians have been hitting anti-Assad forces in, uh, t who are Turkmen over the border from Syria. But the overall strategy of Turkey seems to have been supporting the Islamic State. I agree with you, Peter, that it's clear. I think there's enough evidence to conclude that and, uh, and why Turkey wants to expand its influence in the region. And there are questions about uh, Erdogan's motivation. What kind of a man is this? I mean, he seems to be a megalomaniac. Uh, there's lots of people in Turkey who feel that, that way and are worried about where he's gone. And I think that uh, there are, of course, competing interests, as has been mentioned here. The Gulf states have their interests there, and they're also supporting area groups there, including most likely Islamic State. As we know, President Putin, when he was, uh, ironically enough, in Turkey last week yeah. at the G20 summit, said he had a list of 40 countries. He did say private individuals, not governments, who were supporting um, Islamic State. And now we've come out uh, just uh, uh, after the downing of the jet to say that Turkey was an accomplice to terrorists. Uh, what does Turkey want in the end? Does Assad want to sort of uh, uh, use the Islamic State to, to gain uh, the caliph himself? I mean, some people even think that. Um, the, how Washington reacts to this will be extremely interesting because... Uh, uh, I, I don't know uh, exactly uh, what the United States I, will do. I agree. You know, Flint, you know, what, what do you think? I mean, the only country in all of this would be, uh, I could see, at least privately in the halls of power, uh, happy to see this, to see the spat between Russia and Turkey, very serious one. Um, I, I, I follow uh, President Putin's political career from the very beginning. He doesn't mix his words, okay? He's very, very clear in what he wants to accomplish here. And what he said about this event here is extremely clear. And, and we're all waiting for the reaction here. But there would be people in Washington would like to say, oh, well, you know, the Europeans want to make a compromise over Ukraine. They want Russia part of this grand coalition. The Russians are actually doing something, and they can actually prove it without, you know, PBS stealing their pictures and their video and giving U.S. credit. I mean, I can go on and on and on, and I've been going on and on and on for a long time about this here. And it seems to me that Washington is the only ma major power outside of maybe Riyadh and a few others that would be, you know, they're, they're, just, you know, they're, they're, they're rolling their hands in glee because this this continues the conflict in Syria that they, if they can't get the res resolution they want, they don't want any resolution. Go ahead, Flint. I, I, I think there's a, there, there's a lot in, in what, you, what you said. Um, you know, I, I, if the United States were really serious about conflict resolution in Syria, I think it is essential for the United States to be working in a serious way toward that goal with Russia. If the United States is serious about undermining, weakening the Islamic State, I think it is essential for the United States to be working in a serious way with Russia, uh, among others, toward that goal. But in the end, the United States doesn't want to work with Russia in a serious way, because that would involve real give and take, meaning some give in the American position. It would mean the United States is no longer uh, be able to present itself as clearly the dominant sole external power in the Middle East, that in order to solve problems, it needs to work cooperatively with other regional and, and international actors. And that is just, it is a bridge too far for much of the American the political ego. class. And so the idea of working with... I shove it up your ass. I can't even listen to that no more. That was... Why is he saying stuff like that? Russia to resolve the conflict in Syria, I think for many uh, American political and policy elites and even for people in the Obama administration itself, uh, they would perhaps almost rather have uh, the conflict in Syria go on uh, rather than have to work with Russia, work with Iran, work with the Assad government in order to solve that conflict, because it would be a clear signal that the United States can't impose unilaterally what it wants okay. in this part of the world. And that is a, that's something that I think is uh, the, the American political class on both sides of the aisle is not ready to make that fundamental adjustment in American strategy. Uh, so would you like to reply to what Flint just said? Do you agree or disagree, or would you have a nuanced uh, approach? Go ahead. Well, I think that uh, what we are doing so far in this debate is assuming that um, the events that have happened resulting in the downing of the Russian jet are as a result of policy rather than procedure. The point is that um, it may well be just procedure, and that procedure 
uh, to shoot down aircraft that uh, go into your space uh, is something that everybody has in place. And it was something that was... Uh,